I feel more comfortable with my right hand forward. Said everybody ever that's right-handed. You are not a right-handed southpaw. Right-handed southpaw is not a thing. Now, I made a mistake in my last video of, you know, commenting about how stance is sort of subjective and the right stance at the right time varies from person to person. But when you're um, first learning, you will naturally want to put your dominant hand forward. You see it all the time. You see it in how people street fight or how people, when they first start training, they're like this with their strong hand out front or they lean back with their strong hand like this. What you feel like doing, what feels comfortable to you is wrong because this is not... What feels natural is not what's right. I said you should do what's right for you, not what feels natural, because what feels natural sucks. What feels natural is to hit as hard as you can, and when someone tries to hit you, to turn your face away and close your eyes. That's what feels natural. Your natural instincts suck. Nothing about striking is natural. Striking is not our natural form of combat. Our natural form of combat is wrestling. We weren't meant to punch and kick each other. Our hands and our feet are not designed to do it well. Uh, it, we are not naturally going to keep our eyes on our opponent and keep our hands up. Your instincts all run counter to that. And this all makes sense because from uh, you know, an evolutionary standpoint, we weren't meant to fight each other and do like really long-lasting permanent damage to each other like knocking each other out or knocking each other's teeth out or breaking each other's nose. We were meant to display dominance over each other, hold the guy down, and that sort of thing. So striking is not natural. So it's a 100% guarantee that whatever feels natural to you is wrong. Now, I know what some idiots are already down there commenting. What about Lomachenko? You're not Lomachenko. Every time you bring something up that one of the greats does, one of the all-time best, you know, just the top of the food chain type dude does, they say, well, he does it, so it must be good. No, he's good, so he's allowed to do it. You're not a right-handed southpaw. It's cool to be inspired by elite combat athletes at the top of the game or the greatest martial arts on the planet, but we're not them. The things that apply to them don't apply to us. Hell, if you are in a gym and there's like a guy in there that has a lot of success switching back and forth stances and he always did that like from the beginning and he's really good, chances are he's also like very genetically gifted. He's very athletic and coordinated. Everybody that comes in for their first like boxing, kickboxing class, whatever. They want to stand with their right hand forward. And it's surprising the number of people that tell you that they're ambidextrous. Like being ambidextrous is super rare. You're not ambidextrous and your kid is definitely not ambidextrous. Left-handed people typically are a little more ambidextrous than right-handed people. But I think that might also come from just growing up in a right-handed world. People bring their kids in all the time and they say, yeah, he's, he kind of does things with both hands. And, or they'll say, yeah, I'm kind of equally good with both hands. You're not equally good with both hands. You equally suck with both hands. And that's okay. It's okay. But if you learn to switch stances at the appropriate times, and I'll link a video uh, that we did about switching stances, because some of you were like, Mike, you switch stances all the time. If you see me spar or fight on this channel, uh, I do switch stances. I fight from Southpaw all the time. But I'm not talking about your strategy and your tactics. I'm talking, and maybe this doesn't apply to you. If it doesn't apply, uh, then it shouldn't offend you. And if it offends you, then it must apply. Who I'm talking about is like a guy trying to learn. Like he's gone in the gym for maybe his first couple weeks or couple months. He's learning. He's just taking classes. He's not getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with a coach. And he's just sort of sussing out what he's supposed to be doing mostly on his own. He might feel better and have a little early success putting his strong hand forward. But that's not what you're supposed to do. The best way to learn is from a very basic, correct vanilla kind of stance lead hand strong hand in the rear jab cross now what happens why people like to switch and one of the reasons it works so well for loma is it puts a, he's got a strong hand here right and he can now put some power into this hand so but you know you're not an elite athlete or maybe you are if you are an elite athlete then you're probably not watching this channel and you're probably not arguing with me in the comments if you are a competitive athlete and not even an elite one, there is something to be said about being able to put power into both hands. So a lot of times I advocate a more squared stance so I can throw a harder left because actually, uh, you know, my jab sucks. I have really bad nerve damage in my left hand, so I don't have much of a jab. So I stand a little more square so I can make this more like a straight than a jab. But that's for me personally. If I'm doing drills and practicing a new skill or a new technique that doesn't involve 
being southpaw for a strategic reason, which I'll get more into that in a second. I'm going to practice my jab. Even though I, I don't like to jab a lot and it doesn't work very well for me, I practice it very clean and perfect. I don't say, well, oh, I could hit harder with this one. This is your gross motor skills. This is your fine motor skills. This one is to set up that one. And what happens usually is we don't end up with both hands capable of delivering power. We end up with neither hand capable of delivering a setup. Because that's the purpose of the jab. The, we're trying to put, you're trying to make a punch more powerful, and its purpose is not to be powerful, right? The purpose of the jab, not a lead straight, but like a jab, is to set up a powerful shot. I don't need this to be hard. I don't even need it to land. So making it quicker and more dexterous and more nimble and more tricky is more important than making it harder and you know slower and more awkward. So when to switch? There is a reason to switch from a strategic standpoint. If I'm getting pressured a lot and like the guy's getting over on me and I'm not making anything work, I'll switch to southpaw, right, to buy some time. And that might slow him down because now I'm giving him a different look. Typically where most people go wrong though is they might have practiced throwing punches and kicks from southpaw, but they haven't practiced a lot of defense. You know, if they started learning only in orthodox, which now I've contradicted myself, but I tend to do that on this channel. If they practiced and sparred and drilled like this, and then when they go to do this in sparring, when it doesn't work out, they'll try to switch back. But another reason to switch to southpaw is if he's southpaw and you're not good at fighting southpaws. Just as he's foreign to you, this is now foreign to him because he spends more time fighting orthodox fighters too. How to switch stances? We've done videos on it. There's a couple ways to do it. I mean, if you have time, you can just switch like this if you're far enough away. If you're you know, in the middle of a combo, maybe you want to switch stances to change that angle. That's a common uh, type of footwork, that footwork there to help you change that angle, like that. You can just step and then pivot on your punches. That helps you get to that southpaw. But for the most part, you should be learning and practicing all of your fundamentals in the correct stance for now.